Howdy, Dave LaRue for jamplay.com. What I'd like to get into in this lesson is arpeggios. We've done a lot of scale work to this point, and so I want to introduce you to how I apply the modal system to playing arpeggios and all their inversions. Arpeggios are very important tools for bass players, especially if you're uh, playing a walking line or something, we really need to be able to outline the harmony at all times. So knowledge of chord tones is essential. But what I'd like to do now is get away from just playing things from the root and start using the modal system to bring our arpe arpeggios through all their inversions all the way up the neck and get you to start seeing chords from a different perspective like we've done with some of the modal work where we want to look at things differently. Well, I want you to be able to have your finger on A and to picture an F major 7 and not, you know, have to immediately gravitate towards F. Bass players are so bound to the root. So we need to get a little bit away from that. And this should free you up some. So what I mean by applying the modal system is same concept. Uh, we're going to start all the inversions of, well, we're starting with major 7th chords with our first finger on the E string. We're going to play as high as possible in one position. Now obviously these will not be three notes per string, so that's out the window, but otherwise pretty much the same idea. And some of the other ideas will apply too. We'll, we'll talk about that when we start transposing. But let's just first look at uh, the root position major seventh chord. Now, by now you know that the major seventh consists of the first, third, fifth, and seventh of the scale, one, three, five, seven. So, what you need to bear in mind here is find that first, and we have F, A, C, and E. Well, those are the only four notes you're going to play in this exercise. If you play something else, it might sound great, and we'll talk about that later too, but we really want to adhere to that chord structure for, for the time being. So, let's work through each of those inversions. Again, as high as possible in one position, so I'm going to go past the octave. Okay, now we need to find the next inversion. Now this is a little more difficult because we're not moving in scale steps. Well, what you can do is think of the second note you played in the previous inversion. Well, that's going to be your starting point for the next inversion. Now, this is F major 7 starting on A. Okay, so let me show you that fingering. Okay. That's a major seven, starting with the first finger on the third. Now, we determined we can go to the fifth, which is C. Now, you got some big stretches there, so you'll have to just get accustomed to that. And that leaves one more inversion, the seventh. So we go up to our E, and we have our half step first, but we're still starting on the first finger. And that's an F major 7 in all its inversions. Now, from a practical standpoint, let me just point out something. Some of these fingerings are pretty difficult to execute at high speed. And I, I favor this inversion. I like to play lines where I start on the 7th, but I cannot play at, like a, a sequential line. My third and fourth finger are just not that strong there so and i work on that and i practice it that way but as you go through these start to make adjustments where you need to always of course go for what sounds good and what you're able to execute in a line sometimes you have to get away from what is considered you know correct technique or proper technique the use of arpeggios really gives us some vertical movement through music so even in soloing or melodic playing it really adds a little breath to lines as opposed to always playing scales. You know, I, I mentioned in the uh, lesson on intervals, we, we want to start getting away from just playing scale shapes. Uh, they, that can be really boring and it sounds like you, all you do is practice a lot, which is great, but we want to start making some music. This is something we can add to our melodic vocabulary and, and just our regular functional bass vocabulary as well. All right, let me demo 
the F major 7 uh, with the metronome. So I'll do this in eighth notes. Now you notice I, I phrase it a little differently. Sometimes I teach where we repeat the top note. In that particular instance, it just felt better. And sometimes I practice is where I don't repeat the top note. And I now that's going to take you off the beat a little bit. I think it's a more even phrase if we play. So if you want to stay on the beat with the metronome, you can double the, the octave at time. You probably should technically do that, but I always phrase it the other way. It just feels better to me or sounds better to me. Obviously, we're going to now want to apply this to all the other keys. So let's talk about that for a second. Again, let's stay within the modal system and we'll use the cycle of fourths as our practice vehicle. Uh, so our next key would be B flat, correct. Um, now we have to find the lowest note we can use on the E string in a B flat major seven chord. Now this is again getting a little trickier than scales. There's a lot more space between notes. A lot of the notes are eliminated. All these will not start on F or F sharp. So you might have to search a little bit. So I go back to my handy reference and I think B flat, D, no, F. Okay, so I have an F. In B flat, we happen to have an F. That is the fifth. So I apply the fingering I did for F major seven, starting with the fifth, to B flat major seven, starting with the fifth. Now, of, just like we did with the modes, we need to work our way up the neck and see where all our starting points are. But again, you have your fourth finger reference or your next note reference, they're not all fourth finger, um, to tell you where you're going next. Well, we're going to A. Well, what is A? A is the major seventh. So we start our inversion on A, playing the same one we played on E in F. So let, let's go ahead and do that. Now my next note is B flat, so finally we're back to root position. Next note is D, the third. And that's all the uh, inversions in the key of B flat. Let me show you how I run that together. Uh, we want to do it just like we do with the modes, take a brief pause after each one, change keys. That concept really is about uh, thinking ahead again in music. We don't want to worry so much about the chords. I'm going to assume you know each one individually. The trick is applying it over a piece of music where the chords are changing and the time is changing, and, you know, who knows what. So let me go ahead and run the F major 7 and B flat major 7 for you. Okay, that's how I transition between keys, and obviously you want to work this out through all 12 keys. It'd be good for you to start practicing where your starting points are, so let me work through the next couple quick, uh, couple keys real quickly with you. Our next key would be E flat. We're going to find that we start that one on the G, so that's our third. A flat also will start on the G, but it'll be our seventh. 
D flat, we're back down to the F, that's the third. Anyway, that's the concept, and you, you can figure out the rest of them from there. All right, from this point, what we need to do is go on and look at some other chord qualities and some ways we can use these arpeggios. Okay, more later, stay tuned.